Teschler, Executive Editor at Design World, and today we're going to tear down a coaxial helicopter toy made in Guangdong, China. Now there's a couple of interesting facets of uh, its operation. Its remote control is via IR rather than radio control. You kind of see the little IR sensor right there. This keeps the cost down but limits the control distance to about six meters or so. Also, you can use a smartphone app together with a little add-on module uh, to serve as the controller. The module generates IR um, when it gets control signals from audio tones coming from the phone's audio output. And the tones are generated from the app on the phone. Now the drone uses what's called a coaxial configuration of rotors for its locomotion, uh, along with a very small horizontal propeller for moving about. Uh, the control is a little tricky and takes some getting used to, but it works with practice. Okay, now we're going to explore the coaxial configuration in this teardown. A coaxial configuration uses two counter-rotating props, one rot rotating clockwise, the other rotating counterclockwise. This isn't a new design. The coaxial design was first conceived in the 1800s. And the point of having two coaxial sets of rotors is that the forces around the central axis for lifting the vehicle are symmetrical. One problem with having a single set of rotor blades is there's a torque uh, exerted on the craft opposing the direction of the rotor blades. And that torque causes the thing to rotate in a direction that opposes the, the rotor blade rotational direction. That's the reason uh, you'll see single rotor helicopters have a tail rotor which counteracts the main rotor torque and stops the thing from rotating. Well, coaxial rotors don't have the main rotor torque problem because they're uh, rota rotors turning in opposite directions, so their torques cancel. In a conventional coaxial helicopter, the rotational uh, maneuvering and yaw control happens by increasing the collective pitch of one rotor and decreasing it on the other and it causes a, a controlled dissymmetry, a torque. Now in a little inexpensive toy like this one, you can't really afford to build in the mechanisms you need to adjust the rotor pitch. So the builders have done something else. They added a little horizontal prop to accomplish the same thing to some degree, uh, but that's a pretty limited control that you have there, and you wouldn't want to fly one of these things where there's a lot of wind. What's interesting though is how the creators of this toy managed to design counter-rotating props while keeping the cost down. Now, the top rotor rotates clockwise while the lower prop rotates counterclockwise. The helicopter does this by using two concentric drive shafts. The outer shaft plays host to the lower prop and extends all the way uh, to the top prop. Now I've added a couple of bits of tape so you can see uh, the shaft rotate when we actuate the control. And you can actually see here that when I rotate the middle prop, the whole shaft rotates. So, in other words, this and this are actually the same shaft. And that means that the shaft rotating this prop is actually inside the one rotating the middle prop. As you can see, it doesn't move. But I can, there's a little gear at the bottom of the motor here that I can rotate to get this guy to, rot to move. And I'll do that now. And you can see when I do that, Our shaft doesn't move, so it's only an inner shaft doing the rotating. Now, another point to note is that the prop on the top incorporates what's known as a fly bar, right here. The fly bars were invented in the 1930s and are basically a bar that has weights at both ends and it spins with the prop and it's analogous to a flywheel. Uh, the weights on the bar uh, which in this case is attached to the top rotor, help stabilize the, uh, the thing in the plane of rotation and they reduce thr crosswind thrust on the rotor. Now, 
One of the more interesting points on this toy is how the designers managed to get the counter-rotating props on concentric shafts. Real helicopters do this by means of a relatively complicated differential mechanism. In an inexpensive toy, you can't really afford to do that, so we're going to take a look at how the uh, people in China managed to pull this off. Well, we've taken our little helicopter apart, and the secrets to counter-rotating props have been revealed. The way you do that when you don't have much money is to use two different electric motors. And uh, you can see the bottom here, uh, we have two drive shafts. There's one, and there's the other. And they each drive a different gear. Here's our top prop gear. Yeah, let's see if we can rotate it for you. There it goes. And behind it is the gear for the middle prop. And we can rotate that for you. Now on a real helicopter, um, if you had uh, two motors, you'd have to synchronize them. But I think the builders of this are depending on the fact that they're, uh, the manufacturing parameters of the two motors are probably pretty close and they're both working from the same battery pack. Um, so they're probably both spinning at about the same speed or speeds that are close enough to actually make this thing work. So now I'll tear into the, uh, the body and we'll take another little bit closer look at uh, what we have here. We've disassembled our uh, housing and the internals are now pretty evident. This is a 250 milliamp hour rechargeable battery that uh, powers this whole thing. Here's our two motors. And our uh, drive wheels are down below here, pretty evidently. And behind this is the circuit board. I'll flip it around so you can get a little bit better view of it. Maybe. There we go. Um, nothing is labeled on here, so I'm going to take a guess at what some of this stuff is. Um, this is for the uh, charging plug. That, I'm guessing, is the motor driver IC. Here's the IR sensor, so I'm thinking that's probably the IR uh, uh, translator. And here's the capacitor for the motors, I'm pretty sure. And behind us, we have a lot of little discrete components. And that's it. Thanks for watching. And tune in to a lot more videos on designworldonline.com. Thank you.